worship me God this morning. Yes. Yes. You know, as uh, Jacob mentioned, uh, yes. you know, we're sending out a team to go to Roseville. Hey! your first time with us this morning. Uh, we're part of a worldwide movement of churches because we want to go and fulfill God's dream, Matthew 28, quote, to make disciples of all nations. And so, hey, we don't got a place up in Roseville, so hey, somebody's going to go? And we're like, here am I, send me, and there's quite a few of us here this morning who are going here on the team. We even got a chant already for the Roseville mission team, amen? Roseville, are you with me right here? All right, I'm being greeted from the Roseville region. We rise up. We rise up. Because rose up. Roseville. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, guys. You know, uh, Roseville is awesome. We love Roseville. We love Roseville. Good job, Jeremiah. Place. Uh, you know, if you've never been, you got to come. Uh, let me know. We're going to be up there very soon. Uh, but you got a lot of great stuff up in Roseville. I mean, we got the Roseville Galleria. Uh, if you've never been, oh, my gosh, it's huge. Uh, they're even building a new, like, um, a uh, health sensor inside of it where you go inside and you pay a membership and you could constantly get health updates on your health. It's a new thing they're inventing. Really interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, just a little more up north in Lomas, you got the High Hand Cafe. Uh, if you've never been, you got to go. Jen knows what's up. Uh, you know, you got the Fountains Plaza where they got a, like a strip of other, uh, you know, restaurants and locations. They even got a Dave and Buster's up in Rose. We got some David Busters out there. You know, and of course, we got a peach coffee because we all love peach coffee over Starbucks, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the title of my lesson and what we're going to need in the church here and in the church over there is a forward faith. And that's the title of my lesson today. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is assurance of things hoped for and the confidence of things not seen. You know, having faith is so important because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen an hour from now, a day from now, a week, months, years. We don't know what's going to happen to the next generation. We don't know. But the Bible gives us a solution. You got to have a forward faith. Yeah. You got to have a faith that is going to oversee any hardship or difficulties that will come in your life. Because we know we got a great God who is going to take good, good care of us. And so I got some points here this morning to help us have a forward faith. On, you know, the first thing here is we have to have a faith, a faith to face the facts. Ooh. And go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. Like that, we have to have a faith the facts mentality in second samuel chapter five we're going to study out this account of when king david newly becomes king of israel in second samuel five let's check this out i've been reading this for my quiet times so i really love this passage it's really good uh but in second samuel five a faith the facts mindset second samuel five verse one the bible here says all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on the military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. I'll stop right here. We'll continue on in a bit. But uh, I love this portion here in our first point of faith, the facts. You know, here's David. He just becomes newly appointed king over all of Israel. And he just gets appointed. He led Israel in their military campaigns. And I like what he said right there in verse 2, what God tells him. Mm -hmm. You will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their ruler. Well, you know, with faith of fact mentality, the, the mentality is, hey, what's the facts? The, the fact is the world that we live in is not that great. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a lot of things going on on the day-to-day -day basis every day, wherever we go at any point of the day. You know, if you just turn on the news at any point of the day, in any city, in any country, in any part of the world, you're going to see hundreds and thousands of crazy statistics, yeah, crazy things true. happen in people's lives. And so I like this passage here where God is telling David, hey, I'm going to appoint you king because the people need a shepherd. Uh, the people need somebody to take care of them. Uh, people need somebody to look after them to tell them like, hey, you got to stop walking that way because you're going to walk off a cliff. Let me help you on out here. You got the word of God in your life. I'm going to help you out. And so we need a shepherd in our life. 
Yeah. You know, it reminds me of that passage in Matthew 9 to the end where it, I'll quote it in verse 36. It says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Yeah. You know, the first step to have a forward faith is we need a faith of facts. You know, there's so much going on in the day to day life, but we have a faith that will push through all of it. The reality is that we need to see and understand the, the world that it says it's harassed and helpless. Yeah. The only solution and hope the world has is disciples of Jesus Christ living for God and be able to plant churches all over the world. Are you guys with me right here? You know, um, I, I don't need to go into statistics of all the crazy things that happen in the world. I mean, in SAC, in San Jose, California, the world, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, I've been following uh, different cases uh, uh, about just things going on. You know, it's interesting because uh, I work at Pete's Coffee. Yeah. Um, hence why I like Pete's Coffee over Starbucks. But it is really good coffee. You got to try it. Um, but uh, in our, um, if my Pete stores, uh, one thing that like a lot of my coworkers like doing is following the latest crime, you know, little, uh, latest crime yeah, like yeah, issues so going on good. in the world. And so we're following like different cases that they're talking about. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I had no idea that was even happening. Like, dang, I, I kind of want to hear more because I am I'm so out of tune. Uh, but uh, there is this one guy that I've been following. His name is Henry Ruggs. Oh! Um, you know, his name is Henry Ruggs, if you know him. You know, uh, he was a wide receiver of the, the Raiders. Um, he got drafted when he was about 21 years old or so, maybe even 20. And this guy, he had everything. He got a contract from uh, the NFL, millions of dollars. 21 years old, he had his life set up for life. He was set. He had everything. But what ended up happening is when he turned 21, uh, eventually the, the year went on, turned 22. And what happened? This guy, he got everything he wanted. He got the Corvette. He got the girl. He got the club. He got the status. He got whatever he wanted. And so one night he pushed it a little too far. He got the Corvette, got his girl. He left at about 2 a.m. from this bar, was hammered and drunk. He was wasted. Um, this guy leaves and for whatever reason, he's just like flying down the road, goes out to speed about like 120 miles per hour and he crashes headlong into this woman who is about like 24 years old with her dog and they both died on impact. Uh, they both died. Um, and they, and his life was, it was gone at, at an instance. This guy was arrested, and later they found out he had a gun in his glove department, uh, you know, carrying without consent. Uh, and this guy was on trial. You know, because of his money, he prolonged his court date for two years. He said, I can't come. I can't come. I can't come. I need to reschedule. I'm out of town. Something happened. Can't come. And they constantly push it out, just trying to have two more years because he knows. My end, is, I need to face the fact of what I just did. And finally, after two years of postponing his trial date, they finally convicted him. This guy is up to set uh, for 10 years in prison because of what he did. Um, and, you know, no matter what it is in the world, it, there's nothing else out there for you. We got to faith the facts that the solution is in God's kingdom right here. Are you guys with me right here? You know, uh, this is not just the world there, but like, you know, we had our first Roseville night on this past Monday. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the, you know, going to plan out Roseville up there. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we got an incredible team. You know, we got Ernesto, the besto. Uh, we got Sold Out Soul. Angel, who is an angel on the team, uh, and the list goes on. We'll come up with nicknames. Uh, but uh, man, it's, it's gonna be awesome. But like, literally, our first night together, we're like, hey, you know what? Let's go in a circle because we're family and let's really get to know each other here. And we just went in a circle, just shared about our life. And man, you'd be, the, you'd be surprised at the things that we've just been through uh, the, the abuse, the addiction to drugs, um, the clubbing, the partying. Uh, you know, teen pregnancies are on the verge of it. You know, single parent homes. Like, that's just within the church here. Yeah. So, like, man, I mean, I don't think we're that bad of people, you know what I mean? But, like, dang, what is going on out there in the world yeah, before true. us? And that's why we're here planning a church out to Roseville because the world needs some hope up there. Oh, yeah. right here. 
You know, the challenge is, if you're here this morning and this is your first time in service, I want to challenge you to study the Bible today. Yes. Uh, get in the Word of God. Learn what it means to follow God because this is the only hope for all of humanity yes. in God's Word. Are you with me right here? Yes. You know, my second point is, you need a faith. Uh, not faith the facts. you got to faith the facts. My second point is, you have faith through change. Come on, bro. You know, change is throughout all the Bible. And, you know, as we mentioned, uh, you know, we're going to go to Roseville. So there's going to be a lot of change in the church here. And there's going to be a lot of change over there in Roseville. And so change, change is good. You literally, you study the Bible, change was throughout the Bible. You can't find an instance in the Bible where there is no change. Uh, from the beginning of Adam and Eve, uh, Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, um, things didn't work out, so there was change. Yeah. Then God sent a huge flood. He was like, hey, we're going to start this bad boy over again from ground one. Uh, through Noah. Then Noah, there was Abraham, then Jacob, then Moses, then Joshua. And it doesn't start there. He even had the judges period. Uh, where constantly uh, leaders would raise up. Either they would be faithful to God or they would be unfaithful. And then another one would rise up. And then another one. Imagine being a disciple during that period. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like, man, I'm going to roll some dice here if that leader is going to be faithful to God or he's not. Uh, we'll find out. Like, this was during what they were going through. And so change was throughout the Bible. And so let's see the change of leadership from King Saul to King David. Let's continue on our account. In 2 Samuel 5, verse 3. Let's go there. In 2 Samuel 5, verse 3, the Bible says, when all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a compact with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years in Hebron, and he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned over all of Israel and Judah 33 years. Uh, what a passage. I came prepared this time. Um, but here is the account where King David becomes king over the land. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, it says King David became king at 30 years old. Uh, this also was when Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old. Um, you know, it's interesting because just a little insight here. Uh, this is actually the third time King David was anointed king over Israel. Wow. Uh, first time was by Samuel, yeah, yeah. second time was by Judah, yes. and the third time was here amongst all the Israel, uh, all wow. the Israelites, the elders. Okay. He's appointed a third time, wow. really showing that David was appointed before God, the priest. Uh -huh. He's appointed, uh, appointed before Judah, God's people, wow. and then the third one amongst the elders, all the world. Wow. And David was a foreshadowing of Jesus to come. That Jesus was appointed before God, his people, and all of the world. David was the first coming king that Jesus would be the king of the world. Really cool. And so here is King David just becomes king over the land. It says he led the military campaigns uh, and he led God's people and he took good care of them. You know, no matter what period we are in, God is going to take care of us. Uh, and we just need to have faith through the change. Um, you know, a forward faith. Change is so good. Yeah, yeah. it is. Change is so good because it calls you higher. Yeah. Oh, it calls you higher. There it is. We're, we're, we're not shrinking back. We're only going to keep going forward. Are you with me right here? And so change is good. You know, it, it change is good because it calls you higher in your finances. Like, man, all right, I got to make sure uh, I got a budget on lockdown. And I got a job with some consistent income here. And I could pay the rent. And I could get some groceries in my house so that I could prepare for the future brothers and sisters plan, who come into plan. the kingdom. Yeah. You know, it's a faith hire, a call hire, because, you know, we need to believe God wants to use you. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, just the, the answer. God wants to use each one of us here today you know with change as well you know a lot of our um you know mentors or disciplers are going to change the person who mentors you or walks with you in your life it's going to change and so you could be feeling some things like man like change is yeah not liking it right here um change is one of the most stressful things for people to handle it's just different you just don't know what's going to happen right and so change is is good but since the announcements of roseville 
I just been hearing little rumblings, what? little rumblings of things going on in the church. You know, somebody was like, "Oh my gosh, I hope my disciples not that guy." Or you know what? I hope it's not that sister. Say, <laughs> "Oh, change again." I wonder who's moving now. You know, you keep asking, like, will we really be okay after people leave and go to different places? You know, someone else has said, hey, if I don't lead, if I don't start leading something, I'm going to start struggling right now. Uh, this could be all in our hearts, right? And change just reveals so much inside of us. The saying that God just wants to remove out of us. Are you guys with me right here? You know, what's really cool, uh, there's a parallel account of 2 Samuel 5 in 1 Chronicles 11. Um, where it gives you a little insight on who was leading the military campaign with David. And in 1 Chronicles 11 verse 6, I'll quote it here. It says, David had said, whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zerai, went up first. So he received the command. You know, the passage here says, like, David was like, hey, I'm going to lead the military campaigns. But I'm going to need some help and I need some experienced people. All right, whoever leads it first, you're in charge. And Joab was like, I'll go. And he raises his hand and he becomes chief amongst all of David's army and he leads the way. And so really the question is, man, we need to have the faith to raise on up so that we can fulfill these pockets in God's church. The, cha the question is, who's gonna be the next person to raise up? Who's gonna be the person to say, I want to lead a Bible talk? Who's gonna be the person to say, I want to lead all the Bible studies? I think sometimes you're like, oh, well, I wasn't picked, so oh well, you know, I guess it wasn't for me, or maybe I'm not liked. But the reality is, it's just a matter of who wants to lead. Yeah. Just raise your hand. I will go. I will lead the way. I'll answer the call. I want to help God's people here in SAC and in Roseville and all of the world. Are you guys with me right here? Yeah. You know, for um, for myself and uh, you know a few others, uh, it's been two years now since we came back from uh, the Bay Area with Jacob, Courtney, myself, Isaac. Uh, Emily, Brooke, and so yeah, on, yeah. Uh, Abigail. You know, it's been two years now, and it's been great. It's been awesome. We've been faith in the facts right here. Um, <laughs> and from the first year to the second year, God has blessed us, and we've been fruitful yeah. every year, which yeah. is awesome. Come on. You see all the disciples out here today. Yeah. But it's interesting. I noticed that between the first year and the second year, we have had the same amount of growth in the church. However, in the second year, we have had more disciples than we had in the first year. So I'm like, okay, well, what does that say? Well, we have the same amount of work, the larger amount of disciples. What is the answer? What does this mean? Then what it means is we have the same disciples working and the same ones not working. We have the same disciples who are out there sharing their faith and those who, who are not. Amen, and so now all the more, change is good because it's got to push the leaders out. Amen, and now the Amen. ones below are going to need to raise on up Come to be on, able to bro. say, hey, here am I, send me, I'm going to get out, the job done because I want to see some souls saved for God. Let's go, bro! Um, you know, change, change is tough. Um, you know, for myself, uh, I'm going through a lot of change. Um, you know, uh, as Jacob announced, we're going to go to Roseville, me and my wife, and yes. we're excited. Yes, and there is a lot of change. Yeah. You know, uh, right now, our planned scheduled date to move to Roseville is August 1st, so that we can get an apartment, so we can get things locked down, and we can go over there and just start the region. And so, we're super excited. Yeah. However... Uh, August 1st is, is like two weeks away. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> and so we still need a lockdown in an apartment. So that means we have one week okay. to solidify our apartment because the following week we're going to go to Mexico. So really, if we don't get an apartment in one week, we're in big trouble. Uh, so talk about faith, the facts right here. God is stretching my faith. You know, um, you know. I don't know if you've heard as well. I'm sure you have, but you know, unfortunately, you know, Abigail announced that you know we're unfortunately having a miscarriage. We were preparing for a baby, and we saw the doctor. It was like, hey, things were looking good, but unfortunately, it didn't. It was a bad batch, 
and apparently one in four women had miscarriages. And so now yeah. we got to yeah. start from scratch. All the baby stuff we were collecting, uh, we were searching for two bedroom apartments to prepare for the baby, uh, apply to three places. And so now it's why we are starting from scratch. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, man, yeah. trials, we're being pushed in our faith. Yeah. Um, you know, pray for Abigail. She's recovering right now at home from yeah. uh, some surgery she had. And she's doing good, she's awesome, yeah. and she's recovering, yeah. and she's looking yeah. really good. You know, it's a it's a call higher. You know, um, when I first started reaching out to Pete's Coffee to transfer over there, so I could work a early morning job to be available for the ministry, um, the job initially was like, "Hey, we don't know if we can take you. Um, if we do, you're a shift leader now, but you might need to step down to a barista. So, would you be okay with that?" It's like, "Well, hey, if it's the only thing that works, I'll take it." And uh, lo and behold, after some time passed. I got a call back from the person, from the, the boss out there in Roseville from Pete's. And they're like, hey, you know what? Uh, Shift lead is moving. Uh, we can take you starting August 1st. Oh, 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 you know, as well, uh, tomorrow we have uh, an appointment to go and see an apartment complex at 4 o'clock. Oh, and it's looking really good. They said, hey, it's looking good. We can take you in. We just got to you know, check a few things. And it's looking like you got the apartment. Oh, so that's awesome. Uh, you know, as well, Abigail, the doctor told her, hey, the, the surgery was perfect. And I was praying, like, God, let it be a perfect surgery. Yeah. And God totally blessed it, and it was a perfect surgery. And she's looking really, really well, and she's going to recover. On, and we'll be able to have some That's babies awesome, here in the future. Yeah! yeah. But the challenge is, hey... Uh, through change, you're going to be pushed to grow in your faith. Wow. Yes. We're not going to be the ones to shrink back, but we're going to keep going forward and believe yeah. that God is going to work through us if we keep pushing and don't right. stop uh, asking and answering the call right. to raise up and lead God's people. The challenge is to rise up. Uh, the challenge is to lead the way. Uh, you know, if you've been sitting on the back seat, now is the time to raise on up and answer the call. Hey, here am I, send me. I will do the job. I will get it done because I want to see more soul saved in God's kingdom. We need to have faith through change. You know, my last point is faith to never give up. Come on, Let's continue on the account in 2 Samuel 5. Go, bro. Keep it coming. In verse 6. In 2 Samuel 5, verse 6. The Bible says, The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites who lived there. The Jebusites said to David, you will not get in here. Even the blind and lame can ward you off. They thought, David can't get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortune of Zion, the city of David. On that day, David said, anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind who are of David's enemies. That is why they said, the blame and lame cannot enter the palace. David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the supporting terraces inward, and he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. Amen. Wow. Uh, what a passage, right? Yeah. So here is King David. He just gets appointed over all of Israel. He's a guy in charge, leading the way. And here's the first thing that happens. He gets opposition. He goes to Jerusalem. And who does he find there? The Jebusites. And the Jebusites there, uh, they're not taking it, you know, the defeat with their backs lying down to the ground. Uh, but the Jebusites start mocking them. Hey, you can't get in here if you try. Dude, even the blind and lame could worry you guys off. There's no chance you can get in here. And so what did David do? He says in verse 7, Nevertheless. Yeah, he did. David took fortress, the fortress of Zion and claimed it for the Lord. Nice. Nevertheless, he conquered and took over Jerusalem. Wow. And David had a nevertheless mentality that he didn't give up even when opposition was in front of him. He yeah. did not Come give on. up, but he kept pushing on, forward. On, you know, it was really cool as well because this past week on Thursday, we had uh, one of our last Bible, t uh, Bible Talk family times. <laughs> oh. And uh, we watched the movie Up. Yeah, and that was really good. Some people didn't want to watch the movie, but you know, it's okay. They wanted to watch The Little Mermaid instead. But it's okay. Uh, up one, 
I'm grateful. I voted for that one. Uh, but the movie Up is really, really good. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I mean, it's been out for over 10 years, so, uh, you know, if you're looking for some spoilers here, hey, you're on your own. Uh, but the movie Up, it's a great movie. You gotta watch it. You know, it's about a boy and a girl, Carl and Ellie. And they had a dream for adventure. Uh, you know, they grew up together and they had a dream to fly to South America because adventure was out there. Uh, they grew up together and they ended up marrying each other. Um, however, one thing led to another and got in the way of their plans for adventure. Uh, along the way, as they got older, they, they bought their own dream house. They remodeled it and added their own personal touches. They soon got pregnant and started planning for a future baby. Uh, then hardship began, and then hardship came and began. They visited the doctor's office to find out Ellie wasn't able to have children, and they stopped trying. Depression strikes Ellie, but then they regained the dream to achieve their childhood goal to go to South America. They started saving up money. However, life hit again. Then they got a flat tire and they dove into their savings. Then Carl's leg got injured and they dove into their savings. And then a storm came and knocked a tree over their house. And then they dove into the saying into their savings. But it doesn't stop Carl and Ellie. They keep raising money. And after years pass by, they're in old age now. Carl finally buys the plane tickets to go to South America to fulfill their childhood dream. However, when he arrives home, he finds his wife in a critical condition. And shortly after, they take her to the hospital where she later passes. It's a big blow to Carl's faith, but nevertheless, he gets back up. He makes his dream a reality and puts thousands of balloons on his house that sends the building airborne. Yeah, yeah. Then through many twists and turns, Kyle, uh, Carl finally flies over his house over to South America, where it lands perfectly on the dream place that Carl and Ellie had hoped for, right on top of the mountain, right by the waterfall. And at the end of the movie, they accomplish their goal and find their dream house where Ellie finally made it to South America. You know, the story is about a husband and a wife who, who never gave up. Uh, Carl had a nevertheless mentality. Hey, the, the facts are against me. I'm an old man, can I still go and accomplish our childhood dream? But he gets up, he does the unthinkable, and he puts thousands of balloons on his house, and he sends it airborne where they accomplish their goals. You know, this is a, a story of a Disney movie, you know, so it's not a Christian-themed story. However, in many ways, it really is. And so, what does that mean? What does that mean? If this guy was going to do this and have a nevertheless mentality to get a house to accomplish a childhood dream of theirs when they're little uh, kids, what will we do for a dream of the reality of the world that we are going to follow the Savior of the world to bring the gospel to the four corners of the globe and not let anything stop us so that we can get it done because God loves us so much that he laid down his life for us. What will we do in return as well? I tell you, we're going to have a never the less yes. mentality on, that we are going to stop to on, no lengths so that we can get this done. We are going to persevere no matter what. The challenge I have for you guys here is to have a never the less mentality. No matter what happens in your life, I know hardships are coming. Roseville team, hardships are coming. Yeah. SAC team here, hardships are coming. Yeah. But the challenge is I need a faith of facts. I need to have faith through change, and I need to have a nevertheless mentality to never give up. And I believe we will get to Roseville. We will get to Davis. We will get to ARC. We'll get to Reno, Stockton, Vacaville, and to the ends of the earth. Thank you, my family. I love you so much.